Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call today's Beaver Boardwalk Community Oversight Committee meeting to order. Uh, the first matter of business is additions to the agenda. Committee, are there any additions to today's agenda? Jan? Yeah, I'd like to make a, I'd like to ask for a closed session to happen right before 4.2. Okay. Uh, I ask if you've got any high level information you can share regarding what the closed session item would be about. I just have uh, some uh, information that can't be made public, but is going to be very important, I think, for the priority setting. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So, uh, an amendment to the agenda. Committee, is there any other amendments to the agenda? So, nothing. Again, any amendments to the agenda? Sorry, Councillor Stashik, did Jan say that that in camera will be right before 4.2? I just want to make sure I get it right in uh, 4.2. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, sorry, Ben, any changes to the agenda? Oh. Okay. Look for a motion to adopt, adopt the uh, agenda as amended. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? All right, uh, agenda is adopted. That brings us to our first information item, boardwalk map with sections. Uh, like adoption of the minutes. Oh, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, adoption of the minutes. Yes, we have uh, March 13th meeting minutes to adopt. Is there any changes or corrections to the minutes from the committee? Okay, seeing so nothing from the committee, we look for a motion to adopt. Jan moves to adopt minutes. Maybe all those in favor? Okay, so minutes are adopted unanimously. Sorry about that. Okay, now we'll move to our first information item boardwalk map with sections. I'm not sure, is that uh, John? So, as uh, mentioned last meeting, I said I'd make a map for everyone to use over the next how many ever long period that we're doing this. Uh, so that we're all talking the same language when we're talking with segments. Um, so I've attached, you guys are all sent a map by email. I have printed copies here that I can give to people. Um, it's going to have better imagery in the next version. This is just version one, so there will be new versions to come. It's going to have better imagery for sure. Um, and I just want people to give me suggestions on how they think the map could be better. Uh, I have thick skin when it comes to this stuff. I deal with it all the time. So, uh, you know, I'll look for consensus. I don't want to start making little changes because one person wants it kind of thing. <laughs> but uh, that's just my first crack at it. And so each segment, like Han, the town's version earlier was missing some segments that didn't have letters. I talked to Hans yesterday to find out if it was really important to keep the same letters on the same segments, and he figured not really. So as you can tell, I just started over in the in the east and worked my way west with the alphabet. And I put in the length segments, uh, and I put in points of interest, so things like benches and signs and stuff like that. So I think this map I may have actually forgot to put the uh, hydrology arcs in, uh, like the rivers and creeks. Our data is not the best anyways, so it doesn't match up. But anyways, that, that, that stuff will come in the future. So I, I don't know how this is going to work in regards to today. If, if people start, if they're looking at the map, maps that the town used and start talking about letters, I maybe we can figure that out when we start talking in the priority section. But anyways, yeah, you can look at it over the next few days and, and make suggestions. Do, how do, like, there's just a few simple ones I would make, but do we just uh, email We you? can talk right now on this, we oh. don't have time. Don't All know. right, so some of one would be the Beaver TV station, like that okay. was already on the maps there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that part, and I'll look at it again, but that would be an important one. You've yeah. got the, the tower. Yeah, I've got 
So take your time and yeah, I think I think this is great. Thanks for putting this together. Um, I don't know if I need to make a motion or something, but I'd like to move to make this our official working map. Everything references this map going forward. I don't know what the uh, I don't know. I, don't yeah. <laughs> I think you just yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> motions are great for anything. Like anything, we want the group to to achieve a consensus on and, and then be able to move forward. Motions are the way to do it. Doug has his hand up. Yeah. Uh, Doug? Uh, yeah, I think it's also really good. I definitely support a motion to adopt it. Even with the lettering, I think that's perfectly fine what you've done there, that's that's fantastic. I, I just have two small comments. One would be um, the Big Bridge and Little Bridge. Uh, I don't know if we wanna come up with more evocative names than Big Bridge and Little Bridge. And a second comment might be uh, the areas that are on piles versus the areas that are just on two by tens on the forest floor directly, could we maybe get a, uh, a colored legend just to kind of differentiate those alphabetical sections? Do I have that data, Hans? Yeah, that's the, thanks, that's the big- oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's the big PDF um, that we shared earlier. I digitally, I can, do I have that data digitally? I can send it again to you, because that shows the piles oh, in okay. black yeah, and red dots. That. Yeah. So it's, I in the, that, it's in the agenda, John. I sent the one with the piles in it. No, I know, but for me, it's better to have digital data, like digital GIS data. So, okay. but he, I think he did send it to yeah. me. So yeah, we're good. Okay. Yes. Uh, just a couple more. I could just talk to you to the probably the parking lot area up here. So it's on the mount already. So the parking on the mount street there, and then on the. Uh, well, it's the town trail um, going from eight, like on the north side of the lake. There's three benches on there. I don't know if you want to put them on. Like it's on. Um, I was really thinking yeah. that this group is for the boardwalk only. I, I'm not sure if we're, but I can, sure. I can. I have, someone would have to share that, those locations. I know where they are generally, but. Yeah. I would, if I may, yeah. I would suggest to put them in there, but they will change over time and stuff like that, but it's okay. a good one, I think, to put it over there, yeah. Okay. Anything else uh, on the map, any feedback? I love it. Yeah, I'll throw my two cents in there. I think that's great. And uh, adopting this map to use as we move forward is great too, because it's uh, the level of detail with the, with the uh, lettering to refer to which section it is. If everybody's referring to the same map, we'll know right away which section it, you're, what anybody's talking about when you refer to something. So I think it's great. So we have a motion right now to uh, adopt this map for the uh, EDOC committee use officially. So we'll go through that. And then um, we should probably throw a motion out there to uh, adopt the suggested changes that have come forward so far. And then any that come because you're saying you want consensus of the group for for changes, right? You don't want to just one person saying, "I want this on there," and maybe the rest of the group. Yeah, because what, what then what happens is another person says, "I don't want that." Yeah. yeah. And so it makes my job a lot of a nightmare. Okay. So the ones that have come up so far today, we'll get a motion for those consensus of the group to add those. Jan can take it, and then uh, we could submit some more by email between now and next meeting. And then the ones that come in by email, we can cover off next meeting if the group wants to see those or not. I have uh, one comment. Yep, um, go ahead, Beth. Somebody was mentioning Big Bird, Little Bird. I wonder if it's, it's a, like Happy Creek. Because that's a bridge over Happy Creek. And then this is the Outlet Bridge. There are lots of work on But we're just trying to think of other names. I could call B1 and Bridge 1 and Bridge 2. What was it in the tender? Maxwell Lake Bridge. Yeah. The Happy Creek Bridge. Okay, so Maxwell Lake Bridge and, and the Happy Creek Bridge. Well, Doug, are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I, I could, uh, oh, if we want to make a motion to adopt those names, I, I definitely support that. Maxwell Lake Bridge and Happy Creek Bridge. Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, let's get the motion to adopt this as our official map off the table first. So Trevor made that motion. Uh, any comment on that specifically? Okay, all those in favor? Great, and that's uh, also carried unanimously. So this is now our official map moving forward. 
So yeah, motions about uh, naming and some of the other changes. Somebody wants to throw those out there. We can get those off the table too. Uh, add the beaver feeding station, add the pile data, add the parking lot, and add the uh, the, the bridges, uh, benches to on that land portion. Which, which direction is that? North, North side. side. Yeah. And change the uh, bridge names to Maxwell and Happy Creek. Awesome. Okay. So you're moving that on? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Comments or questions about that? Good job. Okay. All those in favor? Yay. Okay, we'll make those changes and then, yeah, just keep reviewing it and any other suggested changes, throw them in an email to the group and uh, we'll go over the uh, other suggested changes at the next meeting. Okay, is there anything further regarding our new map before we move on? All right, okay, one last time. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, Alexa. If anyone at the end of the table there, it's just hard for the mics to pick it up. So if you could speak a little bit louder, um, that would be great. Thank you. It's just not coming up as well on the, the mics. Not you, Yon. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I just want to make a motion that it. <laughs> can make a friendly amendment. All right, thanks for that, Alexa. Yeah, it's important. That is important, though, because even if we can hear good in the room, it is recorded, and if the mics can't pick it up, then the people that are watching it on on YouTube can't hear what's going on. That's important that they can hear. So, thank you for that, Alexa. All right, so that brings us to uh, EEOC membership advertising item three point two. I will turn that over to you. Heather. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this, what day is it today? Wednesday. So um, council received the applications last night. Uh, they'll vote next Tuesday. It's actually two applicants for the um, uh, environmental rep and one for the youth rep. We're still missing our um, Indigenous representative. Uh, however, Alexa has done us a solid by reaching out to the school, and I think she made a call over to the Friendship Center as well. Um, but we're still going to move forward and bring these these two appointments forward for these two positions. And then, if I have to bring the report back again, then we'll just do that um, as the application is received. Um, and in line with Councillor Astashik's email. Um, it's not formal until they're appointed next Tuesday, and then we'll reach out um, on the admin side of things and get them brought up to speed and added onto the emails and all that kind of stuff. So that's that. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Any questions or comments about the uh, BBOC, BBOC membership? Yes? Um, this is maybe just a side comment, but uh, I did go and check um, you'd sent around the new uh, web um, lookup for, for the BBOP committee, and my name is not on there, and Vivian's is still on there. So you might want to check that. On the website? Yeah, yeah, You because oh. there's that, you go and say, test this, so I went and tested that, and boom, my name isn't there, everyone else, and Vivian is still there. So. Oh, that's so weird, Beth, because I specifically looked to make sure that um, Vivian wasn't there, um, but I'm also really struggling these days, so I'll double check and we'll get it cleaned up. Sure, thanks. Okay. Oh, oh. Just check. Oh, okay. <laughs> Windows application error. <laughs> <laughs> New screen depth, we're fine. Yeah. She's watching YouTube. Shift. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, sorry. Anything for anything else on the membership? All right. We will move on then to three point three completion of rehabilitation project. Can I share my screen? Yes. Uh, yes. Yep. That's even better. Thank you. So basically, this is the Beaver Boardwalk Rehabilitation 2022. 
Uh, I didn't call it any phase, but it's basically a little bit of an overview of what happened uh, in the last couple, two weeks. The project, when it started uh, on the Monday morning, when the, the crew rolled out, Tuesday, the work really started. And basically a week later on the Tuesday, if I recall on the Wednesday, we did the final walkthrough with the contractor. They worked over the weekend and uh, the crew, 10 men strong, um, worked basically from 7.30ish when they rolled out to it to sometimes 6, 7, 8 in the evening. So the work was really congested in that time frame to do uh, what the council accepted as the boardwalk rehabilitation. We all know that we went from four sections to two sections with uh, extension uh, to the uh, west east side behind the Maxwell Lake. We're going to take a look at it. And the other side uh, of the basically the trail connectivity uh, section for the rehabilitation this time. So I just threw in a couple of uh, photos. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but maybe not too much because people might have been there in the meantime themselves. <clears throat> so what you see, of course, the work what was done was take off the uh, sections first. So they were cut in, uh, let's say, handable sections uh, off the wooden posts. What you see down here is the start that goes towards the uh, Beaver Lodge. You're standing on the intersection. The, this worker down here walks basically towards the trail um, at Sutherland over there where you come from the outhouses and then uh, the photo is taken into that gully that goes towards basically behind the Maxwell Lake apartments to the bridge start. The post you can see that uh, on this side there's an attachment later of course we took this height of the boardwalk that comes over the berm that the beavers made this from this section on here it's level straight shut, shut out all the way to the gravel path to the bridge. Um, there's a, in the center, basically, in the middle part, there's what it hits almost the ground slope. So that's good. Um, and it ends up uh, about, let's say, the total deck height is 18 inches uh, above gravel that walks towards the uh, bridge, where basically another project will uh, take place later on. You see the wooden posts that are standing in here. Um, the gully that's made, the trench by the beavers, because they basically live and, and transport themselves, they migrate under the boardwalk. It's how deep that uh, erodes out. Uh, while the posts that had been put in uh, were 10 feet length, they were topped off as well when they couldn't get them deeper in. So most of them are, let's say, between six and nine feet long. Uh, you see how they are, um, let's say, out of the, the soil and basically standing here, that, as you can see, uh, about four or five feet above ground. So sometimes there's two or three or four feet in. Uh, the posts down here, they could take out by hand and just pull them out by uh, manpower. And um, I tried to click, there you go. So this is the other way around. So I turn around on, the, on let's say a little bit later in the day, you can see, but this is how the posts were still standing. So this is the first section. If you see it down on your uh, detailed uh, mapping, when you zoom out, these are the red dots from the posts that were out of line. Um, so yeah, this is basically just taking the top off and this is what you have as a result, what was underneath. Further down, I'm staying now basically in the corner below the outhouse uh, at Settlement. So you see here water, the water is standing water from the snow that was uh, overnight. Um, but this is not a deep trench, you'll see that later. So it's basically shallow, uh, but birds and stuff like that, of course, sit under there. Here you can see a little bit of difference between that standing water that's more shallow and a deeper trench in the other area. And here the posts are taken out completely. And are the posts taken out by hand and by machine sometimes? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when... This is basically the lay down yard that we had on there. Uh, so this is how that feels like, ah, your stomach turns almost. But you see the metal posts over there, the auger, uh, the first section that they took out and they utilized later uh, from the bike park. Um, then 
this is the machine that they uh, use to take out. So you see here the lifting of the uh, cross beam. When that, of course, gives way, they had to pull out the, the posts by digging into the post to try to grab it with the teeth of the bucket. Uh, later, they figured out it was easier to drive up closer and utilize this one here, basically to put a chain around it, uh, strangle the post, and then pull out two inches, lower it again, strangle, pull it out. Um, they sheared off uh, about on this section about five or six poles. So basically, when they tried to grab them with the bucket, it just didn't give way, didn't give way, didn't give way, now sheared the top completely off. So with uh, the monitoring of the uh, environmental person, we double checked that the posts could be remained uh, in there as well. And that was the case. So we knew that already, like we could have, let's say theoretically chopped them all off with a chainsaw, but that was not the intent. But a couple of them were sheared off and, and stayed in the mud. Most, like I said, it's maybe five on this stretch and two or three on the uh, other stretch. Um, here you see the posts have been gone in, and like well, I have other sections as well. So when the metal posts go in, they go in the same position or close by. The length between the posts is about 14 feet in the longest. I think they had one, one or two sections at the end for 16 feet. That's about two feet longer than the uh, original uh, build. Um, but that was because we had multiple offers and we lined them all together to make sure that they were compa uh, comparable. Um, the stringers are two by 12s, so not two by eights originally, but two by 12s. You see that later as well. So when they uh, reach the uh, torque and the uh, required depth, then they are uh, topped off. The L brackets are uh, welded on. And then uh, because everything is uh, level straight. So this is the auger, basically, attachment on the machine that. Uh, drills down the uh, posts. So right now I'm standing again on that cross section down below from the outhouse. Um, they came for the second half of that section from the uh, bridge side. So coming in from, uh, yeah, what do you call that? The, 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 the apartments, the other side of the apartments. Yeah. And then work their way out in that section because we were afraid or afraid. We, we thought like, oh, hopefully they have enough piles because we shifted uh, sections that they did not have to do, let's say the last four or five wooden posts, keep them in and had enough piles to do the rest. And they would have taken the whole way back and forth from one direction only. Luckily, they, we had enough posts and piles that they could work from two sides. So it was only driving in from one side to the half and then the other side, they could already start with this side. So that's why you see this already being built, the crew already, the carpet is putting the boardwalk sections on top of it, while behind my back, they still have to take out the wooden posts and put piles in. So that's why things would double up uh, pretty fast. So here you see a detail of the results. So this is the old section that's been put back on the new stringers. So there's two stringers in the middle on either side of the first center one. The old section has three stringers. So the new has all four stringers and the outside one here is then basically doubling up the outside. So it's attached to the outside and put together in the same you see happening down here. So this is new two by 12s on the outside where the whole boardwalk rests on. So now we have four stringers uh, instead of three and they're two by 12s instead of two by eights. Uh, so this is the, the auger that puts the uh, piles down. Um, I have more photos, but ah, so this is the section. So this is the only 1.5 wide section. That's the first section coming on from uh, Sutherland. So this is the section that was, let's say, the most collapsed what we in the past called section one. Not anymore. But um, now you see what the, the result is. So this is the only one. CC. Section CC. Thank you. Ten CCs. Quick so, so the big uh, tree cut by the beaver is down. Did it fall down itself? Or is yes, it, it came down four or five days before the guy showed up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it fell down on top down here. You can see it there. Yeah. Yeah. So it came down on, on the diagonal. It, it took the, the interpretive sign out. Oh, 
Yeah. So, ooh, that was there. Wow. Yeah, I saw that it was cut to the top. Was yeah, the other side. I just wondered. Where it was. Yeah. No, so lucky no one was there. Luckily, <laughs> luckily they were not there because they would have been, yeah, in for a surprise. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So now you see the connection with the old connect uh, mouse. There you go. That's that's the connection. So you see the little notches there as well. Oh my gosh. It's slow, but doesn't matter. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's it's taken straight as a horizontal. So this is already the town trail section where the posts are taken out. Even I was a little bit too late because they worked over the weekend. So we went there twice, three times a day, four times a day, just to see what we're doing now, what are you here? Okay, and then you come back an hour later, like, oh, took all the posts out already. And um, that's how fast it goes. Um, here you see behind the Maxwell Lake apartments, straight behind it, uh, so closer to the bridge gravel. The ground is there deeper, so we knew that already. So they're welding on another six to seven feet on the posts and to drill them deeper. So the, all the standard measures was 15 feet. So plus, let's say six or seven feet, 22, and then have to top off maybe the last couple of inches again. Um, so it's anywhere between the shallows, this is about six feet, closest to the, uh, the start, and then goes up to 21, 22 feet in total length, depth. So here you see that again. Uh, this is what they crashed. This is the section that we knew to come from the bike park. So basically they drove on the boardwalk from the bike park took out where they knew already it was higher up, so not too deep in the ice. And then you can see how the track, they didn't make it to the end. <laughs> um, this is the intersection over there. So that's coming from both directions. As you remember, the intersection was down from both sides. Um, it's really nice snow. Yeah, so this is that intersection on one side. So you see how, let's say, uh, that works out. Um, yeah, just one of those details. Uh, because I was too late, I put one stick into the hole on that section, and you see how it slanted like a almost 45, let's say 35, 40 degree. Uh, the guys sent me one photo with the post still in the ground. You see, <laughs> the first half of over there is just sideways. So how it's representing how much the post the post yeah angled over. The angled over so the hole in there is not a hole straight down a hole on the 45 degree where the post came out I mean, on the red angle yes. oh, how i'm just wondering how deep they had to go through that little marshy area there. um not too deep okay. for the post um i have a film that they are uh, drilling down there's a lot of rocks in this section yeah. so when the post the wooden posts were pushed down when they hit a rock, it was game over, basically. The auger just goes in Keeps and it on. keep it out a little bit, push it over, going in, try to get there. But they torque all the way up to 15, 16,000 uh, pound. Oh, wow. And then you're standing next to it and then you're like, holy smokes, what's happening with that machine? I have one of the tops later that you can see how they bent inside the auger. Right. And you're saying that uh... They can twist that post so hard they can actually twist that metal pipe when they got it. Yeah, they, right they twist it sheer, almost sheared off. The two had they had to cut off the the right length first, right. and then try to get it out. So they had to blow torch in the auger where it cuts to cut it off to get that piece out again because it was twisted inside. Crazy. Yeah, that's that needs to support the load. Yeah, so here you see a couple of those pipes. So a couple of them are just just about down. Um, that means it cannot go further in that, but it already reached between, let's say 24, 2700 uh, feet of torque. Seven, 1800 is the minimum. Other pieces are longer because it already reached that. So that's what they can then use to extend the other ones that were needed. Um, this is that section, last section comes down. So once again, when this is lifted up, basically you need 18 inches to come up on top of the gravel. And then you're almost level with down here, of course, because uh, then it's almost horizontal. When you shoot a level straight from the highest point here, from the boardwalk to the bridge, you're just under the second step. 
in the bridge. So from the gravel in the bridge, first step, before you get onto the second step, that's the height over there for this piece of boardwalk where you shoot it straight level to the bridge. So, so to a transition someday maybe? So yeah, like in the fall, in the winter, the uh, RFP goes out again for that section. So then they can decide like, okay, yeah, keep it completely horizontal or come a little bit down, it, it ends up with that step. But if you put it lower than the first step, you're basically blocking it off with a dam on top of the gravel. So then when things are coming, like, do you want to take the gravel out first so that water can flow under it? How do you want to do that? We talked, of course, with this uh, contractor about the gravel path and the possibility, the high possibility of uh, creosote ties, rail ties in that gravel path, because that's what was that 30 years ago. That's a concern for a contractor like this. Like we had a conversation and he said, yeah, that's a concern. I'm not sure if I'm going to be happy drilling my True. water down for yeah. the first, let's say, bed of gravel and then hit uh, the, uh, the creosote tie, start to rip that off. And then where are you? Yeah. What, what are you going to do? Leave it in or not or whatever. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a doozy one for that gravel path to build something on top of that. Um, this is, it's a little bit weird, it looks like this, but just to show you uh, what happens when the crew works fast. This is the start of the section coming from the trail, from the beef boardwalk, going towards the bike park, and then basically come and go up to that section towards the bike park. This here, this dark one um, over there, this is the old ramp. And they already attached here the new ramp to the side. So coming over was like, oh, that looks a little bit steep when I even was 20 meters away from it. I started building, I was like, that looks steep. The last two sets of posts were taken down two inches, four inches to have a little bit of gradual towards this ramp and then the ramping down. But even then the ramping down was this steep. So I was like, guys, that looks still steep and it's so weird. Can you not come down a little bit somehow? And because that whole section is once again, straight from back to finish. The landscape goes a little bit down. So when it was built earlier, it was not flat horizontal. It came down already a little bit more. Is this where that overflow on the path is? Is that where you're talking about? The no, this is the first one when you basically, um, when you're standing here, you look towards the bike park. Right. You're standing on the dock the or the dock on your left hand side. Right. It's on our cool map. Yeah, there. cool map. Cool map. So it's the beginning, it's the, the west side of H. Yeah, so you see the, the west side of H oh, above okay. the letter K, there's a B for bench. Yeah. Okay. That's there. Okay. So I'm looking into H. I'm looking okay. over looking H. East. Yeah. yeah, looking east. So we talked about it for a couple of minutes and then we said, like, can you not uh, come down with your two by 12s? So they notched out another three inches. So they still had nine inches left, which is eight inches was the minimum, basically as the same as the old bill. And because of that, they could drop on the first uh, ledger. They could drop it three inches. And then you can see the difference when they reattached it again. Here you see now the slope, it's still a little steeper than it was before, but that's about half the steepness compared to there. So that's field fitting when you're walking around and you see that, and oh, guys, stop, <laughs> can you do something? And, yeah, we can, yeah. solution. Um, so here you see how this post, that hole is normally a nice little round hole where they put the pin in. And this is how much that pin has friction inside the auger. So this is how that hole was just like shearing out and you're standing next to it. You really think it's gonna explode in you. Um, when they drove the machine out at the end of the day or two days when they were at the machine in here overnight, they ripped a little bit more than just the first section on that one photo. So they had a little bit more to repair. Um, and the bucket down here and stuff like that is for the, the sawdust. Get rid of. So 
Now they put it back, that section in again here as well. Straight, here's the intersection. And then basically after they attach that, but oh, this is the end where they also, <laughs> you can look towards the bike park. So they took those sections from the 1.5 meter wide, those sections, they brought them over here to repair that what they <laughs> broke down. Um, so they're putting that back in here. The, and now they have to take all those slats off. Luckily, of course, it's like they were screwed together. <laughs> so most of them could be screwed out. Yeah. Some of them were still hard. And they stripped them, of course, and whatever. So they were able to uh, put it back together. And now the intersection flex that. So. Um, just a question around the corner. That might be, could you look at that last slide? The last slide. Oh, let's see. I can go back. Yeah. It, like this is great. This intersection, but now you're looking east. Yeah. I think toward the bike park. That's right. Yes. And if you go around the corner, uh, I, I don't know if it's at new or it's at the old. But if you go around the corner, there's sort of a ramp. Yeah. That's, and it's, yeah. There's a dip. It, the dip is like there's water on the boardwalk already at that. Yeah. Dip. Yeah. So they did not take that out like we knew when they would come uh, mobilize from the bike park and had to lift everything to the side that's right. what we thought right uh, then they would place it back and they would have the opportunity of course to put it higher back on a ledger extra or whatever they did not have to do that and they couldn't that oh. section was frozen in solid if they oh. would have taken it out they would have ripped the bejesus out of it right okay. so that did not happen so they left that in I'll call you. Um, so they left it in. So basically, yeah. that's what they drove over. So they drove over the ice on the uh, sides okay. and stuff. Like that. Yeah. And we knew, like, yeah, that's indeed that's a dip down. Yeah. So that's. Yep. <laughs> for the guys to put their effort in when it's coming out of the ice. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I wonder because I even had a little bit different feel on the end of the boardwalk there than yeah. all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's why. Any other questions? We, we did keep came in a little bit under budget. Well, it was not our budget, it was for provincial grants, but I got a question online here, Hans. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Have you uh, uh, recorded a lessons learned file with your notes and the contractor's notes? So we have that uh, stored for you know a year from now, along with your pictures and videos and such. Yeah, I'll uh, plan to make that for sure because there's lessons learned uh, indeed. Um, so that's that's good. Yes. So one of the big, uh, let's say, lessons, but that's after afterthought. We know, of course, you feel on the length stretches a little bit of give. It's not like, well, maybe if you have two or two, three people next to each other, they will have that because the auger basically loosens up the ground even even when it goes deeper it loosens up the ground so over time that will uh, stiffen up most likely but it will not never stiffen up to 100 percent rigid because the old board one wasn't like that but the new neither like everything that's stiff that will break if it has a little bit give it will give but then uh, the uh, contractor already said like he would be surprised and, and happy to see what is going to be the section from the bridge towards the uh, learning place, mm -hmm. especially closer to the bridge. Like, is that going to be yay or nay uh, rocky? But if you're standing there behind the Maxwell Lake apartments and you know that they're already 20 feet deep, the posts in, and you look over there, it's like, how deep is that going to go over there? Um, the learning place, like you said before, that hit solid ground. Right. The question is, is that solid? Is that GIF or is that rocks as well? Because if it's rocks, it will feel like, yeah, I'm there. But you might not be there at all yet. Um, other things that we learned, there's a lot of people there. <laughs> mm. Lessons learned. We did some signage and stuff like that, of course. It was still all fast and stuff, but people are there. People walk there. Uh, they had little conversations, but they said, holy smokes, this is the busiest place I've ever worked. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And they don't do a lot of these projects, right. but uh, they yeah. said, there's so many people here. Yeah. 
do we, do we need a, like just an interpreter or something when this is going on? Like somebody from the town just to, to stand the people from bothering the workers or was it? No, 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 no. That was not bothering at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Reactions from the public were positive. Yeah. And even afterwards, they said like, yeah, people say, hey, this looks good. Yeah. This is nice. Thank you. So, so far, the, yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, just, Doug, did you have another question or? Yeah, sorry, second question. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like um, non galvanized piles were used. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Jan? Oh, I just wanted to, I don't want to mirror the end of this, but I just wanted to say like, yeah. kudos to that team because I think they did a good job. And I just wanted to say all, all the feedback that I've received and I have asked people is all positive. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything else? Any other feedback or comments or anything from the committee members? Tom? Uh, the width of Sutherland is magnificent. I didn't think it would be that big a deal. And then when I got there, I was like, wow. It makes a big difference. It's amazing to me how that little bit of difference it yeah. makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah, it is. Um, when I talk with one person that rides the bike over there as well. They said like, hmm, I can't imagine that some people will not get off their bike anymore when it's this wide. And you have one pedestrian coming towards you, you're on the bike, you have the almost the notion, I'm gonna stay on my bike because it might be wide enough. When it's 1.2 meters, at least you get off your bike yeah. and you say to the person, hi, yeah. goodbye. I stood there for a while, yeah. walking back and forth and was a little bit gobsmacked at the difference between the original and that I was yeah. I was somewhat taken aback. Again, it didn't seem like that much. And then when you stand up, it's like wow, it's, yeah. it's, it's a different animal altogether. So that's right. So it's kind of neat how the the boards though are still usable. You know, like you just took it off, redid the posts and the top goes back on. Yeah, the, for the old, the other yeah. section. Yes. Yeah the older yeah like that's really yeah, they, really they makes sense to me. that's right. Yeah. yeah, they took some of the boards off, of course, and maybe, but they took off the side toe kick. Yeah, most yeah. of that they could reuse, of course. Um, the big thing was the side boards when they were cracked or whatever, they're basically covered and sistered up with the new two by 12s. So that was a, a big win. If you won't do that, it will be. Let's say there's more cracks and stuff like that. Really, sistering up helped a lot. Right. They could just, uh, yeah, just place it yeah. on top of it and re screw it. So yeah. that was good. That was, yeah. that's what we, they brought in six lifts of wood in total. Okay. And they utilized four and a bit. Like they had more lifts left over. Uh, you can see that, not here, I don't think so. They almost utilized the last uh, two by fours in green that they could find in the province. Oh, so it's all going to be brown now. Oh, also, really? Yeah. 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 So, but ah. so we're happy that it's not like a zebra right, right now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. New style, I guess. <laughs> New style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Anyone comments? All right. Uh, I, I will. Uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback too. I get a lot of feedback from citizens and same as John, everything is positive. It's all, wow, what a fabulous job. That looks great. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that could possibly be construed as a, as a negative is it's always followed up by, when are you guys doing some more? <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that part is- That's what happened on Facebook. Yeah, that's yeah. hard to answer that part. Okay. Everyone, what about the- The, uh, the, the other sections that are closed. The U and V. Yes, yeah. And from my own, and from like, my own perspective, I was pleasantly surprised at how little impact that crew did while doing their work yeah. Yeah. there's sections it's actually that section right there when i was walking down it i could tell it was old boardwalk but it looked a bit more level yeah. and flat than it had been so i actually had to get down and look over the side to look at the <laughs> pilings to see if they were steel pilings or if it was the wood ones yeah. and sure enough it was the wood uh, the steel ones so that's how little impact they had I, if I hadn't known they were working on that section, I probably never even would have noticed. Right. Yeah. So that's great. 
good job to them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, they obviously had to take a few of the shops out, like going from Sutherland to the apartments, but yeah. really it was, they made an effort, it seemed. Right on. Yeah. 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 And we had, uh, let's say, positive, of course, on the reporting for the month, uh, environmental monitoring. That makes sense. You cannot do it without it. So. Yeah. Even the shrubs that they took out, it looks like they took care to make sure that they were sheared at the ground and that it was yeah. visually as 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 minimally impactful as possible. They didn't just you know smash run them, run them over with the mini hoe and right. smash the willows down yeah. and go and they'll grow back up. Right? Yeah. So it looks nice. It's clean. It's tidy. Like you don't even see sawdust. I see. I saw in one of your videos they had a a tray it looked like a kiddie pool that yeah. they were catching sawdust with. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 great. They did a great job. Little things like that. Um, yeah, the most let's say impacted section uh, for the let's say the, the wetland itself was that corner at the down from the outhouse because apparently there's water running from the outhouse right. as well. So that was a wet spot. Uh, water. It's water. It's, yes, <laughs> water from the outhouse. Thank you. Uh, but that was the most muddy place. So. Environmental monitoring said as well that that's something to really take a look at uh, when, uh, let's say, throughout the summer, does that all come back uh, in the sense that that, is, that was the, the muddiest place, basically. Just another learning yeah. thing there. Yeah. The, the weather was awesomely good. I have yeah. sleepless nights about it. Like, you guys can know that I've been not sleeping for the last two weeks or three weeks leading up to this because I was like monitoring the weather like crazy. But every time they came, it was frost in the morning. Yes, it would thaw a little bit. The wettest uh, conditions was based on the, the little drizzle of rain, snow-ish, because it was still frozen the ground, but it was that what came on top of it. Um, but then again, it helped to get the piles out easier than they thought. Uh, so yeah, it all worked out. Worked out well, but man, I was... Yeah, that, that wet spot where you're talking about, people do jump off the boardwalk and hike up to the, yeah, that's, you know, so they, the people kind of make a mess. That's probably what that happens as yeah, well. So, so we, oh, maybe well, we can put a well, couple of ribbons in there and yeah. put reclamation. But, you know, <laughs> some yeah. or something. There's yeah. the beaver tree over there. Yes. I really think you, you got to figure that it's going to help when you have to go and bid the next contracts mm -hmm. in terms of it's really going to give the town some experience yeah because now they know what the bid was what the winning bid was and the work that got done and the fact that there was a little bit you know so i, I just thought yeah that's, that's cool yeah all right do we uh do we have a cost per meter of boardwalk from these guys oh that they're they're all wrapped up yeah, we had it all ready, and uh, when now the uh, the invoices and stuff like that, we can let's say specify that better uh, on the amount of piles, on the amount of uh, uh, utilized lumber. So, yes. Yeah, building a bit of a database for projects. Yeah, we're twenty percent on top of it per year. Oh, sorry, no. Come on, inflation is not that bad. Okay, we got yeah. that quick. <laughs> Like that today, the lumber prices are coming down because interest rates are going up. So that's good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Anyway, Cheers. all right. Anything else on the completion of rehabilitation project? All right. We'll move to action items 4.1 committee communications review and governing documents. So uh, I felt it was an opportune time to take a look at the three governing documents that. Uh, that this group adheres to. That's the uh, Council Procedure Bylaw, uh, Council Code of Conduct, and the Boards and Committees Bylaw. Reason for this is um, there were some emails that went out from the group, or not from the group, from individual members of the group that Council was CC'd on. Uh, council didn't understand why they were getting those. I received an email from council that said, please help set me straight if I've misunderstood, but did we receive two conflicting opinions from BBOC members? <coughs> Any help on this point would be appreciated. I feel I've lost a bit of the narrative here. 
So the concern is that uh, because they're signed by DDOC members, I think some of the council members assumed that they were official DDOC communications that were representing the opinion of the group. And then to receive another email that um, had some counter opinions caused a little bit of confusion. So, uh, so one second. We just felt it was important just to make sure that uh, the committee's aware of the, those three documents and the contents of them. Um, and it, it's just important to remember that uh, as a committee member, you wear two hats. As, as a committee member in your official committee communications and when you're representing the committee, it's important that you make sure that you're representing what the will is and what the consensus of the group is, not your individual opinion. Individual opinions are fine too, because you're all still citizens of Hinton, so your individual opinions are great and you're free to express those. However, you just, you just have to make sure that there isn't gonna be any confusion when you're you know, expressing your thoughts and opinions. There, there, you have to make sure there isn't confusion that whether you're representing yourself as a citizen and that's your opinion, or if you're representing the Beaver Boardwalk Committee. So that's all it is. Um, I'm not sure if uh, there's a way or just... Okay. okay, I wasn't sure if she had anything to add or, or if Hans, if you had anything to add, we're just talking about the... Uh, Committee communications and uh, making sure that there's an understanding of the difference between uh, individual opinion and communicating that, and uh, opinions and consensus of the group and committee and communicating that. Right. I'll go. I'll go to you. I just want to make. I just want to mention it's, it's always a good suggestion to check to see who you're sending the email to. I think sometimes some maybe even some of those emails the birth that people didn't even realize that. It went and was going to all the council. Mm -hmm. So watch what you say, but also, and how you say it, but also just take a second and look to see. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and generally, I, I would say in general, council doesn't need to be CC'd on the communications that, that happen in the group and anything that's contributing to discussion or anything that's upcoming that we're going to talk about. Um, unless it's the official consensus recommendation or thoughts of the committee as a whole, it's probably best to leave council and even town administration who are outside the group. And of course, citizens that goes without saying, they don't really need to be privy to that. We can have our, our internal email communications. We can have our discussions in the meetings and come up with our, our consensus and anything that needs to get communicated can get communicated out through the proper channels. That said though, like I said, you guys are all still citizens of Hinton and you're perfectly entitled to your individual opinions and you're free to express them. You just have to make sure that there isn't confusion that they might be perceived as coming from the group, that's all. That's says it all. Thank you. Uh, Heather, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Nope. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there anything the committee wants to any comments or questions or anything from committee? Okay. Perfect. So that brings us on to 4.2, preliminary discussion regarding prioritizing repairs, maintenance, and reconstruction of existing boardwalk. Wasn't there an addition? Addition. Oh, I'm, yes, I am very, very sorry. My apologies again. It's twice now in this item. So I believe we just have to stop recording. Is that all we need to do? And then the motion to go into closed session. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, we'll leave the motion first, actually. So we'll need to go on. I'll make a motion to go into closed session. All right. Uh, committee, there's a motion to go into closed session. All those in favor? Uh, Kevin, in favor? Okay. <laughs> okay, we can stop recording.